Hello, this is Jeff in 9iZ and welcome back to the shack. I haven't made any videos in quite a little while and so I've decided to make this video highlighting the Advanced Radio Devices ARD230A amplifier. So here sitting on the workbench next to me is this amplifier, the ARD Model 230A Linear Amplifier. Uh, some of the interesting things about this amp, it was produced roughly 1988-89 era it is fully automatically controlled through servo motors, uh, DC servo motors with uh, feedback resistors. And it's a floor model, floor standing model, that uh, can be moved into pretty much any position. It can be totally relocated even out of the ham shack, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet away. It uh, connects to a remote control head by a 25-pin uh, uh, serial cable. So here it is. Uh, one of the things I find interesting about it is its, uh, its look. It has an industrial or a commercial look to it. Uh, power and on. It's, uh, it's built like a tank. It's, it's, uh, all the components are very heavy duty inside and it's constructed just like a piece of equipment that I might uh, service at work. Uh, so which it makes it nice. There's a fair amount of room inside to work on it. And uh, we like to call it R2-D2. My friend Nick, N9SJA, and I picked this amplifier up at Dayton Hamvention out in the flea market probably three years ago, and we haven't done anything with it really. It, it does work. Uh, it's, we've used it a few times, uh, but the, the uh, resistor, the uh, error variable capacitors get out of uh, adjustment, and it has a tendency to trip the breaker uh, when the step start circuit uh, goes from the step start to full line voltage. Uh, seems to have some issues there so we are in the process of rebuilding it and uh, we're going to try to refurbish it and bring it back to its uh, glory it's a pretty amazing piece of equipment uh, considering the time uh, when it was built uh, nowadays a lot of amplifiers are using microcontrollers and uh, various stepper motors and things like that but uh, none of that was around much in the uh, late 80s uh, this uses a z80 processor uh, to control the radio and like i said dc DC motors using potentiometers for feedback. Uh, so let me turn it around a little bit and we'll take a take a look inside. Okay. Alright, so I don't know if you can see this really well, but uh, here we have, I'll put a little shine a little light on it. Inside we have the Peter Dahl big heavy duty transformer. And as you look through, you can see a squirrel cage fan blows air up through the uh, the tubes and right here is one of the drive units and this one has a little DC motor down there, gear reduction drive and a coupler shaft that comes down to the uh, potentiometer uh, right here and directly above it you see this uh, air variable uh, capacitor and you can see some of the various components up here uh, coils and uh, here's part of the, the uh, RF board in there. It uses a um, vacuum uh, vacuum switch, vacuum relay uh, to switch. It's capable of uh, QSK operation for uh, people that are into that. Uh, CW. Um, it's capable for QSK uh, with that uh, vacuum relay. And uh, we'll go ahead and turn it on around. Okay, now we've got the back. Uh, you can see it uses a BNC connector for the RF input and uh, capable of adjusting. ALC uh, has a main circuit breaker and then fuses for the power supply. It has like three different power supplies in it, the high voltage power supply and then uh, two other uh, power supplies for control and um, for the tubes. Uh, so it's capable of switching antenna relays. Um, you can set it up so that when it changes bands it uh, changes the relay system and would change to a different antenna. Uh, maybe a vertical antenna for 20, maybe a uh, wire antenna for 40 or 80, you know, some tri-bander, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, accessory port, and here's the control uh, control port right here. Up top, uh, you can see the RF output. I went ahead, uh, for no particular reason, I went ahead and just put this little CV load uh, on there just to have some kind of termination on it. Uh, in the past, when I've done some troubleshooting in the past and just had it set there running, uh, not operating, no input, but uh, just in case there might be a little bit of drive 
And that seemed like a good idea to have some kind of termination on there. Uh, you can see one of the issues right here is power cable. It's all worn out. It's uh, probably just due to age. Uh, you can also see it wobbly. I think it may have been dropped. Uh, I need to get the transformer out, the power supply out, and uh, look at the chassis a little bit and see if I can't uh, straighten it up with uh, some. Uh, continuing. Alright, we'll continue around here and we can see the power supply. There are six big computer grade electrolytic uh, capacitors in there. And here's the these four uh, rectifier diodes and uh, more part of more of the power supply. As you can see it's got a small little circulation fan in addition to the big centrifugal blower uh, that blows air up through the uh, 3CX800s. It, it uses a pair of 3CX800s in the output. Uh, uses a Pi-L output network and that's uh, driven by the, uh, the gear drives uh, for the air variable capacitors. Uh, in addition there's also we can see in here there's a here's the other air variable in the gear drive. Uh, there's also a third uh, drive unit that turns the band switch uh, as it goes to uh, all the various different positions on the band switch. Uh, so there's a, a third drive unit that So that there's not that. a whole lot left uh, to see up here. You can kind of see here's the inter interlocks. Uh, there's various interlocks around ar around there for, uh, for safety. Uh, this amplifier is safe for me to touch because I haven't had it plugged in for a long time and I've verified that the uh, filter capacitors, everything's discharged. Uh, it's safe for me to, to do this. Uh, normally you wouldn't want to stick your hands inside of here and have the covers off or anything like that. but. Uh, for today, uh, for demonstration, it's a lot easier uh, to do that. Uh, so this amplifier is uh, serial number 116. Uh, like I said, they were produced around 1988-89, and I don't have a whole lot of other specifics uh, on the amplifier. I, I've uh, gotten in contact by email uh, to the, uh, the ham who originally owned the company, and I'm looking for more information there uh, so that I can uh, keep the information on my website uh, for other people who might be interested in it. Uh, this is kind of a, this amp is kind of a uh, enigma. You, you don't see very many of them, uh, don't hear about very many of them, and they were very high dollar back in the day. So only the serious contester or serious DX ham uh, probably could afford it. Uh, the price range I've seen is anywhere from $3,500 to $5,500 uh, back then. So uh, like I said, only the serious uh, contest or the serious ham could probably have afforded one okay, back, back then. Uh, back around here in position. Uh, what I think I'll do is take some close-ups. Uh, I do have some already posted on my website pictures. I'll take some close-up right. video. Close-up of the front. Right here. And if we come over the top, I uh, should have some pretty good lighting. Uh, you can see 2300 volts danger. Uh, the power supply operates at uh, 2300 volts DC and is capable of around an amp and a half. Um, here we can look down and see the various components in the top, the, the tubes, uh, the coils, the various inductors, and if I come in real close you can see there's the top of the band switch, uh, it, which is automatically, adjusts automatically. Okay. Here we are looking through the side, a little bit closer view of the power supply down there, high voltage power supply, and the fan. You can see all the control wiring uses uh, big, nice heavy duty Molex plugs, and it's uh, all run in looms and uh, routed to various portions uh, of the amplifier. Okay, here's another close up coming through the other way. Here we can see the transformer, another interlock uh, where the power comes in. There's a terminal strip down there, and it's hard to see. Here we got some extra light. There's the uh, part of the step start circuit. There's the big uh, resistor, and here we can see more of the drive. Another shot of the drive units and the equipment directly directly above the drive unit. Alright, so let's take a look at the control head. Uh, 
Here's a shot of my operating position at the shack. Uh, nothing's fired up right now, and uh, I've been operating a lot of 10 meter uh, DX, but uh, today I took a break and decided to make this video. Main radio here is a Flex 5000, and main amplifier here is the Alpha 78. So we hope to change that, and uh, Nick and I hope to get this amplifier operating a little bit more. Here we have a close-up, sorry for the reflection. Here's a close-up of the control head, and it will monitor all operations of the amplifier, safety uh, trips, um, voltage, plate current, grid current, um, power output frequency, uh, you can change the modes from uh, fully automatic mode to fully manual mode. Uh, every Everything can be adjusted on here uh, from this remote control head. And it lights up really nice. Unfortunately, amp is not powered up right now, so we can't uh, can't show it. lights up with a really nice blue uh, backlight. I hope to show that in another video with it uh, up and running and do some tests with the uh, with the dummy load. Uh, but for now, this is uh, this is where it sets. All right, so back to the bench. Uh, it's a mess, like any true ham shack should be. Uh, various tools, components, cleaning supplies, uh, variac, pan of ice. I recently, also recently, uh, built this little shelf for all my screwdrivers and and uh, got some random, random small hand tools and other projects. Uh, as you can see, other projects on the bench uh, as well. So that'll conclude today's preview of the ARD230A amplifier. And we'll continue this video series uh, as I continue to work on it, hopefully showing uh, some of the things that I repair and showing it in operation at a later date. Maybe I'll do another uh, couple more videos soon. So for now, I'll say 73 from Central Indiana. And I uh, hope you enjoy the video and hope you might enjoy the uh, blog site in 9iz.com. And uh, check back later. 7-3.